This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi, and my guest today is Daryl Nelson. And Daryl is a Yamhill County artist who's here to tell us what's new. So welcome. Thank you. Okay, so what I see before me are some beautiful watercolors here. You want to maybe talk a little bit about your background and how these, how you came to be doing this sort of painting? Sure. Um, I actually took it up in retirement. This is not what I did for a living originally. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I retired after working in Portland for, I guess, 27 years. Mm -hmm. And we moved to a small farm near Sheridan. And we uh, bought some sheep, and we bought, had some chickens, and we had an Asian pear orchard, and we more or less fed ourselves and preserved food and all that kind of thing. That's the barn off the farm that we had, and this is a sheep, one of the sheep on the farm. And after being there about three years or so, it dawned on me that Oregon winters were, were quite long. If you were out, you know, they get rainy for a long period of oh, time. Oh, yeah. And I wasn't working anymore. I was retired. And there isn't a lot you really have to do on a farm in the winter months. So I took up watercolor painting. Oh, okay. And I decided that uh, I would give myself a year to see whether I really enjoyed it or not. And so I set aside a room in the house and said I was going to paint at least two hours every day, and I was going to take at least one class every six months. And it's now soon 10 years later, and I'm still painting wow. a couple okay. of hours a day and mm -hmm. taking class every six months or so. And the, uh, well, I'd like to think the work is getting better, at mm -hmm. least some of it seems to be. These particular paintings were done quite a long time ago. They mm -hmm. are uh, on display at Borsma's Knit Shop uh, since the day they opened. They were part of the decor there when they opened the shop. And they are still there. I borrowed them for this <laughs> interview. Okay, okay. So, um, I just came back, actually, from a class in Bend. Uh, this particular was one of my every six months kinds of classes. Mm -hmm. The instructor was a gentleman named Tony Van Hazlitt from Maine. He come, came out here from Maine. Mm -hmm. And he uh, he's my age or a little older. And he... Um, paints in a manner that is different from the way that I do, but on the other hand, you pick up techniques and skills that you can translate and use uh, in what you do if you're a mm -hmm. watercolor painter. So it's worth uh, attending class, even though you don't want to paint exactly the way the other person paints. I mean, the landscapes I do are fairly impressionistic. I mean, they have a kind of, oh, I don't know how to describe it, but they're not, they're not completely realistic. On the other hand, the portraits that I do are pretty close. I mean, they're um, maybe not photographic, but they're pretty close mm -hmm. to realism. I have moved from doing just sheep portraits to doing people portraits as well, and those are quite realistic. I don't tend to be very impressionistic on portrait work, but I am on landscapes, and I still am, and probably always will be. I don't know why, I just like it better. Yeah. I discovered that there are a large number of folks in watercolor painting who are already doing a lot of the vineyard scenes in Yamhill County. Really? So I decided <laughs> that I would try doing the old style farms because mm -hmm. that's frankly what I grew up on in the Midwest many okay. years ago. Okay. And they're kind of disappearing slowly. Sure. Yeah. So I've been I have now a stock of uh, photographs. Most painters collect photographs first. Mm -hmm. And I have quite a stock of photographs of small barns, particularly landscapes with barns in them. And this one is a good example. There weren't any sheep there. I put the sheep mm -hmm. in. If you're a painter, you get to take liberties with things like that. You move the so flock. <laughs> you move the flock wherever <laughs> you want it. So I put the sheep in. The barn is, in fact, there. There mm -hmm. is a barn that looks like that. But it doesn't have sheep in front of it. In my mind, it should have. That particular barn did have sheep in front of it. But um, most of those I paint get sheep, whether they really had them or not. Uh, this particular, uh, just this last year, I also began doing some silver point drawing because okay. it interested me. Silver point drawing is uh, literally drawing with a silver wire, and it's held in uh, what looks like a lead pencil in a, in a way, like you would have an adjustable lead pencil, mm -hmm. and it holds a small length of silver wire. Silver uh, wire drawing is very, very old. We didn't... Uh, find graphite until the 1700s. So the graphite pencils that are used for drawing now mm -hmm. date from no, no earlier than the 1700s. Uh, that means that Leonardo da Vinci and people like that drew with charcoal 
or metal point of some kind, and usually silver point. So when you say silver point, is it's a piece of silver? Yeah, it's a piece of silver and wire. you etch it into something? Yes, you end okay. up, uh, they, they now sell a compound that you paint over, uh, you buy a piece of, of masonite with plaster on it. Mm -hmm. You can buy it at Mary Artists down here. Mm -hmm. And they have a compound you paint over that, and then you can draw on that. Uh, they made... Um, Oh, in the early, early years, it was old animal hides were, were uh, in some way treated mm -hmm. to do this. But uh, Leonardo da Vinci actually did a lot of his drawing using silver point. So it's, kind of what you're doing is this, the metal point is scratching off down to whatever's underneath. Is that no, it? No, you're actually leaving a little track of silver. Of silver. Okay, yes, so it comes yeah. off. Yes, a little oh, thin track of silver. Okay, interesting. Kind of the beauty of it, because after a period of time, sometimes a couple of years, the silver tarnishes and gets that kind of burnished color, mm -hmm. kind of color of, of, of you know, tarnished silver, I guess. Uh, how did you get uh, into that? Well, I just read about it, and it interested mm -hmm. me. And then uh, Sitka Art Center out on the coast here offered a class in it. Okay. So I went and took the class in it, and it's uh, it's... It's very careful, very slow work, and I think it's fair to say most of us who do it, do it in small size drawings mm -hmm. because it is very slow, leaves a very faint line, so if you want a darker line, you have to go over it many, many times. Oh, I see. And then you can't erase it. So if you make a mistake, you have to start over because there's no, er there, it won't erase. So completing a drawing can be quite a task. <laughs> you can be at it quite a while. I would think so. So is the subject matter that you do with silver point different than the subject matter that you do with watercolor? Yes, yeah. Because the painting, because the drawings are all quite mm -hmm. small, landscapes don't really work very mm -hmm. well. Uh, something like a single rose okay. works very well. Or maybe a, a clump of, of grapes or something mm -hmm. like that will work quite well. Uh, but a portrait... I've got one portrait I'm fairly pleased with, but I've tried several that I wasn't mm -hmm. pleased with. It uh, it has to be something that will work in a fairly small frame, a fairly small size. Mm -hmm. Somebody you, with a small head. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> there are folks who do miniatures in landscape. Mm -hmm. We have some in, in mm -hmm. here in Yamhill County who who are very very good at miniature landscapes. But so far, I've not had great success. At least not doing them in black and white. If I were working in color, it might be another matter. But in black and white, I've not had a lot of success with real small landscapes. Mm -hmm. uh, the painting, uh, this is what's called quarter sheet painting. You buy sheets of watercolor paper and uh, you work either in half a sheet or a whole sheet, a half a sheet, or a quarter sheet is pretty normal. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just literally tear it in half and then tear the halves into quarters and that these are all quarter size. And most of us uh, do quite a lot of work in quarter size partially because you can purchase the frames and the matting for them economically. It doesn't mm -hmm. cost a lot to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you cut them to an odd size, you are committed to customizing the mat and You're the right. frame, and then the price has to go up considerably mm -hmm. if you want to try to sell it. And so. with watercolor, you pretty much have to mount and frame everything. Yeah, you almost do. You mm -hmm. can get by maybe with just matting it, but you've got to at least uh, do something to... Uh, well, frequently, matting changes the outlook of the whole composition because the composition, as you were painting it, may well have been a little bit too long on this side and too short mm -hmm, on the other mm -hmm. side or something like that. The painting underneath the matting is never exactly the same size. It's a little bigger in one direction mm -hmm. or another. And getting a matting cut that fits just right and you can place on it just right gives you a balance in the composition that makes it work better. Mm -hmm. You get to frame. You frame. The, yeah, frame you're your, framing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're framing it. That's basically what you do. So in most cases, yeah, you probably wouldn't try to either show or sell watercolor paintings without matting them mm -hmm. first. Now, what about silver point? How is that usually like displayed? I, I am trying to display it with a simple frame around it, and that's all. You don't mm -hmm. have to protect it. It will not smudge. Okay. So you And you don't have to um, have it covered with plexiglass or glass. Mm -hmm. So I have purchased simple black frames, mm -hmm. and I'm trying it that way. I don't know how it'll go. I have never tried it before. <laughs> so Now, well, aside from uh, Borismas, are you showing your work anywhere at this point? Or? Yes, I have work at... Um, uh, at uh, Hidden Treasures Gallery here okay. in town. I've been mm -hmm. there for, oh, I guess four or five years now. 
And I just had a piece accepted by the Civic Center in Independence, Oregon. They built a new Civic Center nice. and they solicited uh, oh. local artists to submit work to be juried in and they mm -hmm. accepted one of my pieces. So they're going to have an opening down there. I think it's August 4th, if I remember okay. right. And there are about 50 of us, I would think, it would be really? fair to say, who have, will have artwork up. Wow. They have made a choice to use the walls of the Civic Center as an ongoing uh, uh, gallery. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah, I do too. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I was pleased that they accepted one of my pieces. So that's kind of nice. Uh, there are kind of uh, levels, I suppose, of work. If your work is appreciated by your peers, that's nice. If the general public appreciates it, uh, if a gallery appreciates it, that's nice. Mm -hmm. If the general public does, that's even better in the long run. Sure. Of things. Yeah. So you kind of you measure your successes and failures by where you fit into all of that. And so. you said that you're going to be doing the Art Harvest Studio tour. I am this year. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I did for four years, and then last year I missed because we sold the little farm we lived on, moved into McMinnville, and we were literally moving right at the time of the oh. tour. So I couldn't very well have an open house for a period of time. I didn't have a house <laughs> in the middle of that. So now, do you have a painting studio in this home? Uh, yes. Now they're. Uh, uh, unlike, well, some artists build a separate studio outside their house, and, mm -hmm. and, and probably if we'd stayed on the farm, I might well have done that in time. But I didn't in the time we lived there, and I have not in the house we have here. So a room in the house is my studio, and I use the living room, dining room area, and some hallway space for exhibiting work. Nice. So, well, it's nice and it's not because your wife sometimes says that all the people that, that come to see your work have to walk all the way through your house. <laughs> well, that's so, true. So there Ooh, are, there's that. There are about 150 or so each weekend, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little more than that who come through. At the farm, we had developed, a, oh, I don't know what the right word is, but we were known by enough folks where there were, there were a couple panel um, vans of uh, folks who came um, out from Portland nice. uh, all four years and walked through. One from Seattle. In really? Fact. Yes. Wow. Yeah, came down three years out of the four hmm. and uh, came through. The, they tend to be water people who focus on one thing or right. another. In the October tour, there are folks who are doing weaving and folks who uh -huh. are doing pottery work and folks who are, well, what's his name? Jim up the hill is pounding copper and oh, there's right. all sorts of things <laughs> like that. Uh -huh. So there are people who come just to see the watercolor work, mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, uh, I guess one of the advantages of doing, if you're, if you're going to use a room in your home, mm -hmm. watercolor doesn't smell bad. No, no, that's you know, like true. like oil painting. That's true. That would be really difficult to it keep can the smell be to, out from the rest of the house. But yes, yes, that can be a bit difficult, yeah. oil paintings. And with, with watercolor, you know, there's... Oh, it can be a little messy because you end up with, I end up throwing away a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So I have waste baskets full of things. And if you end up cutting your own mats, then there's odds and ends left over from all of that. And it can kind of look like the preschool yes. arts and crafts room. Yes, it can. <laughs> yes, it can and it does. With all the kids in the finger <laughs> yes. painting. And <laughs> yes, it can and it does frequently. Sure. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so you're good. I guess for people watching this, then they can mm -hmm. look forward to yeah. you being back on the tour if they've missed you. Well, yeah, if if missed by you. chance they have, yes, they yeah. can, and they ought to come by and say uh -huh. hello and all those things, yes.